Welcome back to the four main stages of model-based definition. In the previous video, we outlined the organizational stage which involved capturing our 3D views and nodes. In this video, we will be discussing part three of the MDD workflow, the preparation phase. In this phase, we will cover everything you need to know about 3D PDF preparation and template creation. Preparation phase is a really important step to ensure your design is displayed and presented in an accurate and visually appealing manner. A 3D PDF template is the backbone of the 3D PDF. SOLIDWORKS MBD offers a set of default 3D PDF templates that are ready to be published. Users can simply select to publish a 3D PDF from the MBD command manager and select from a list of default templates. However, it is always best practice to create a new template from scratch customized specifically to your company's needs using the 3D PDF template editor. 3D PDF templates can be as creative or professional as desired. Before we begin designing our custom template, let's route a new file location. This way we can separate our default templates from our custom templates. To do so, select Settings, System Options, File Locations, and Add. From here, I'll just locate a previously created folder, select the folder, and click OK. Now that we have routed our file location, we are ready to begin creating a template. To start, let's open the 3D PDF template editor from the MBD command manager. The 3D PDF template editor allows users to customize and display their designs in a whole new way. Check out all these examples of great templates. As you can see, the template editor has abilities to create a wide range of styles. It's time to show you how to make these templates possible for your own company. We will start by creating a blank template by selecting the new command from the command manager. The page size and orientation can be customized, but we will leave them set at the default values and select OK. Now that we have a blank template, it's a good time to discuss some of the editing tools and features it has to offer. In the graphics area, you can see a thumbnail area and a primary viewport. The primary viewport will showcase the 3D views that we captured in phase two and display them in our final published PDF. The thumbnail area controls which view is displayed in the viewport. We can use this to cycle through the 3D views. On the bottom left of the template editor, we have our page tabs. Pages can be added, deleted, reordered, and renamed using the tabs. Lastly, at the top of the template editor is the command manager, where all the editing tools can be accessed. Many tools even offer word-like editing to ease the transition into template creation. Let's start creating our template by adding a background. Simple colored backgrounds will give a template some definition, making your model stand out and pop off the page. To add a background, I will select the rectangle command, click in the graphics area, and size it to my sheet. For the majority of tools in the template editor, the user will be given a heads-up display to control the feature's specific characteristics. For the rectangle, let's add a fill. We can choose from a pre-existing color. We can choose from custom colors. Or we can even pick a color. In addition to adding a fill color, we can add a border color, and we can adjust our border thickness. Next, I want to adjust the corner radius of the rectangle. Adding corner radius to your background and other rectangles throughout our template will make it softer to the eyes and more pleasing to look at. Take these two templates for example. There's one with rounded corners and one with sharp corners. This may be a small difference, but it's the small differences that make the template stand out among others. The last step is to order the rectangle to the back. The template editor has layering abilities like Microsoft PowerPoint and Photoshop that will help save valuable paper space throughout your template creation. I will now add some additional rectangles in which we will layer items on top of such as the primary viewport, the thumbnail area, a logo, and other text. Simply add the rectangle, adjust the settings, and then locate your items on top of it. Then I can easily select the rectangle, I can control C, and then control V to copy and paste as many rectangles as I need and adjust them accordingly. I 
After adjusting and positioning the additional rectangles, I have created the structure of my template in a very short amount of time. Next, I will add a logo to my template to give my model the proper branding. The template editor makes it very easy to apply branding to your design with the image button. Select image from the command manager, locate the image, and click OK. And then resize and position it to your desire. Following our branding, our template needs some text. When I select text from the command manager and place it, the heads up display appears showing four different types of text. These are important to ensuring your 3D PDF is published correctly. The first option is a text field. Here users can place the field and populate it with specific text at the time of publishing. Used often for initialing items and inserting read-only content. The second option is a template text field. This field allows for text to be inserted directly into the template editor. It is most commonly used for titling and labeling areas. The third option is a custom property field. Users can link SOLIDWORKS custom properties to their 3D PDF at the time of publishing. And last but not least, we can insert PDF form fields. PDF form fields create areas in the published document that are editable directly within Adobe. This is a great way to insert a comment section on your 3D PDF. To demonstrate, I'll first select a template text field, size it and position it, and then edit the text. I even have the ability to change the font, the font size, and the font color. To create additional text fields, I will simply copy and paste, position it, and then edit the text. This keeps the format and size consistent. With the titles in place, it is time to set some properties. We will add an additional text box, but this time select a custom property text type. First, we name it, and then we assign it to a SOLIDWORKS custom property. An important tip is to type the custom property the exact same way as it is typed in the custom property dialog here in SOLIDWORKS. If they are typed the exact same, SOLIDWORKS will automatically populate the fields when we go to publish the PDF, which you will see in part four. Lastly, I simply size and position the field. Just like before, I will copy and paste the custom property placeholder and change all their characteristics. For the designer category, I will simply just copy and paste and then change it to a text field. Text fields are a great way to initial items or input text that is not a custom property. Now that I have labeled my areas and added my properties, I want to insert a comments area. I create a text field, select PDF form field, name the field, and then position and size it. This field will remain blank in the template editor, but in our final published document will be editable to anyone. It's important to only use these fields for editable information. Any read-only information should be inserted using other three text types. Our first page of the template looks complete. Oftentimes, manufacturing drawings are made up of multiple sheets with multiple detail views. With the 3D PDF template editor, we can create however many sheets as desired and add as many viewports as desired. For our template, I will create three additional pages to demonstrate some good practices that will help show off the design. One page will serve as a title page, the second will present our bill of materials, and the last will present the exploded assembly. To insert additional pages, select the plus sign in the bottom left hand corner. Double click the new tab and rename it however you like. We have now created a completely blank page. To save time, we can easily copy and paste any information from one page to another. Simply control select and copy and paste the items onto the new page. Once I've pasted the new items, I will resize the logo and position it correctly. From here, I will edit the rectangle by changing the fill and adjusting the border thickness and color. 
Our cover page is now complete and all we have to do is drag and reorder it to the front of page one. Now using the same process as before, create a new page and title it Bill of Materials. Once again, to save time, I'll simply copy and paste all the items that I desire to transfer over to my new page. After a few small edits, we are ready to continue. I will add a bill of materials placeholder by selecting the bomb table tool from the command manager and placing it and resizing it to the rectangle. When we go to publish our 3D PDF, we can link a bomb table to that space that we have provided here. Let's quickly change the header from notes to bill of materials. The last step to finishing this page is to add an independent viewport. Select the tool from the command manager, place the viewport, and resize it to the rectangle. Independent viewports are entirely free from the primary viewport and thumbnail area, which means they can be rotated, zoomed, and modified separately from other viewports. Remember, you can add as many independent viewports as desired. The last page of this template will outline some advanced techniques that will make your template stand out among others. As mentioned earlier, the 3D PDF template editor has the ability to layer items on top of each other, more importantly, layer items on top of viewports, which creates an amazing published result. By layering items, it saves valuable paper space allowing you to fit all your critical information on one template and limit pages to cut down on file size. To begin, we will create a full page viewport. I simply place it and size it. Notice I left a small buffer zone around the edges. This way, I can add my blue background and still have it show through to maintain my template theme. To add my background, I will copy and paste it from another sheet. When I paste it, it will cover up the viewport. All I have to do is simply order the background to the back and the viewport will show through. Now let's add some text. Once again, just control select and copy all the desired information. and Paste it onto your additional sheet. After some positioning and ordering, the text is all set. Remember, the software has the capability to layer build materials, notes, text areas, and even PDF form fields. To finish off the template, I will be adding an additional bomb placeholder on top of the viewport. After some final touches and adjustments, our template is ready for publishing. We have a cover page, an overview, a build of materials, and a full page viewport. The last step is to save the template into the new file location that we routed. To do so, select Save As, locate the folder under the theme directory, and save it as any title as desired. Remember, it's always best practice to create a fully custom template geared towards each individual company. In the event when time is short, the default templates can be edited and published. That is all for part 3 of the MBD workflow. From here, we will move into part 4 of this series, which will cover 3D PDF publishing and finalization.